Hello and welcome to the Ellen Road Roundup with me, Rob Mulholland, and what a week it's been for Leeds United. As ever at the Lunatic Club we know and love, it has been a week of highs, lows and pure confusion. I'll try and decipher it all as we go. So settle in, it feels like it's going to take me about three days to settle through the wreckage of this week. The week started with beautiful footage of Charlie Cresswell resisting the press well in an under-23s game, somehow managing to pirouette his massive frame like a jewellery box made out of corned beef. No lad as big as him should be able to turn like he did, he was genuinely inspirational unfortunately for the wrong people. As it turns out, a big fan of Charlie was captaining a ship down the Suez Canal. I'll be perfectly honest with you, I don't watch the youth games, I see the clips that people post on Twitter, but this clip is enough for me to think that Charlie Cresswell should start all of our games between now and the end of time. Seriously, he's built like an industrial fridge and spins like a Beyblade. Get him in the first team now. Once we'd all had a cold shower and calmed down a little bit, we got a chance to play another one of our favourite games, Random Celebrity in a Lead Shirt. As this week's honorary Leeds fan was Sugar Ray Leonard. It. I absolutely love this campaign, to be honest with you. I think it's loads of fun. And I really appreciate that Rad Rizani seems to be choosing his targets by going on Cameo and selecting price low to high. Who knows who it's going to be next week? It could be Gail Porter or Tom Brady or Abu fucking Hamza. Who knows? Get your bets in now. We spent much of last week patiently awaiting the announcement of the England squad after rumours were flying about that Patrick Bamford and Luke Ayling were both in line for the first call-up to the England senior team. Call-ups that would be both deserved and, more importantly, fun. But it wasn't to be, as Gareth Southgate seems determined to ruin yet another major tournament. So Gareth, how are you planning on solving the conundrum of having so many brilliant attacking prospects in your team? Five at the back and Dyer in midfield. I love Gareth Southgate for the summer of 2018. I think that was when humanity peaked. But let's be real, we didn't get there by playing beautiful swashbuckling football and this generation of English talent is too good to be entrusted to a man that negative. And realistically, come on, have you ever met anyone wearing a waistcoat who wasn't a cunt? Of course, international squads please no one, everyone's dad is harder than the other team's dad and everyone wants their players picked. But... The reasons given for why Patrick Bamford weren't selected were fucking mental, with Gareth Southgate talking up Ollie Watkins' pressing ability. Now, I know Ollie Watkins is a good pressing footballer, but saying you didn't choose Patrick Bamford because of his pressing ability is like saying you don't want to eat celery because you want something low calorie. Patrick Bamford presses harder than my post-lockdown waistband. That's not his fucking issue. I just find it mad that the people at the FA seemingly don't want to sell 300,000 ailing England shirts exclusively to just me. Moving on from that wretched disappointment, we had a glimmer of good news as Adam Forshaw was spotted in the background of a training video. And this blurry out of focus shot where he's hanging around in the background is absolutely the perfect format for any sort of mythical creature like Bigfoot or Nessie or Adam Forshaw with working knees. Who knows if we'll ever see him play again for Leeds United. It's been such a long time out, but he's a fantastic footballer and he seems like a great bloke, so fingers crossed he can get back to action soon. Then along came Friday night, and I'm not making this up. It's true. It finally happened. Leeds United won a game of football in London! <laughs> Fuck, that's a lot more confetti than I expected it to be. <laughs> It. That's right, Leeds United won a game of football in London for the first time since Keith Chegwin died. And what a game it was against Fulham, with their manager Scott Parker choosing to turn up dressed with what looks like a camping mattress underneath his jacket, or as I like to call it, an all-in-one divorce bodysuit. In truth, this is a game that Leeds dominated from the off, and about seven minutes in, we got a chance to revisit one of our favourite segments. How has VAR been a bag of shit this week? Because in typical Leeds United fashion, we scored a beautiful early goal, only to have it disallowed because Tyler Roberts was leaning slightly forward. And I know, technically, by the letter of the law, this decision was correct. You can't have any part of the body that can play the ball ahead of the line. Fine, I get that that's the rule. I think the rule is wrong. His feet are on side. That should be enough. Why are we trying to rule out as many goals as possible? This is what's so fucking annoying. Who is sat in that little referee's office? Is it fucking George Graham at the controls? The goal was beautiful. He didn't get an advantage by leaning forward. The ball was played into his feet. We are losing brilliant moments week after week after week because virgins in TV towers are rolling them out. Look at this celebration. Look at it. How can you be happy? that this has happened. Luke Ayling deserves that goal. He deserves an England call-up. He deserved that goal even more. I just thank God that fans weren't in for this game because after such an extravagant celebration, having to tie your hair back in the bun while the Fulham fans give you some of their traditional hardcore stick. Hey, you boy. Yes. Yeah, no goal, it says, I see. <laughs> 
<laughs> Pass me another scone. Ultimately, it wasn't allowed, but I'm choosing to live in a world where this celebration wasn't for nothing. I'm just going to whack away. I'm just going to say he scored. Fuck it. He scored in my heart. This being a Leeds game, it wasn't total smooth sailing. It all got a little bit chaotic as Gianni Alioski and we'll get to that later, played not so much a hospital pass as a Stoke Mandeville mortuary pass, putting the entire defence in trouble. It wasn't to be his last moment of madness in the match. There was a moment in the first half where it looked like Leeds were in danger of getting dragged down to Fulham's level. Briefly, some good old-fashioned English football broke out, resulting in this classic 90s-style goal-mouth scramble and an incredible save at the end from Elan Melier, a player who gets better and better every fucking week. You cannot convince me that Elan Melier isn't at least 50% genetically octopus. But we went down the other end of the pitch and thankfully another England reject and Leeds legend Patrick Bamford opened the scoring with a fantastic finish. After this, the game looked to get hairy for all the wrong reasons as Fulham looked to hit us on the counter, with this dangerous chance in particular ending in some good old-fashioned silent movie slapstick. There was a little panic in the Leeds defence, all of it emanating from left-back to be honest with you. Janny having another mad moment where he hoofed the ball out for a corner when there was plenty of options available around for him for the simple pass out of defence. Now the great irony of this all is, is that Leeds fans were rightly furious at Janny for giving the ball away like this and forcing us to endure another series of corners. But, two and a half years ago, that's all the cop would have been shouting for. Fucking get rid, lad. Good stuff. Bloody right on. Just shows how total our education in football has been under Bielsa. We've all learnt a lot. Eventually, once again, a corner was to prove to be our undoing, as Fulham swung a set piece towards this giant Danish gonk. Oh, well done, Fulham. Oh, so impressive. You bought an absolute giant and banged at his head. How clever. Well done you fuck off after this Bielsa gave Janny a little talking to you stop being such a fucking stupid prick it clearly had some effect with Alioski getting fired up as fuck and Harrison Reed here biting off more than he can chew by squaring up to a North Macedonian lunatic I wouldn't bother Harrison, he's from a war zone and he'd happily bite through the side of a Mini Cooper for a giggle. The second half went on with Leeds in total control, and us lucky viewers were given some top tier entertainment as we were gifted with the chance to watch a Fulham player forget the names of his kids in real time. Ultimately, Fulham's shit finishing cost them dearly, can't relate, as they squandered this chance and we went up the other end and Rafinha produced a touch of fucking silk. It's the softness and the delicacy of the touches under this pressure from two players that makes this so beautiful mate, for me. The way we saw out the rest of the game was incredibly impressive, with everyone remaining totally dedicated and putting their usual level of energy into it. Luke Ayling, for example, putting in so much effort he had to consume an energy bar with the same sort of ferocity I would a stripe at 5am in a stranger's kitchen while he's talking about conspiracies. Oh yeah, all lizards are they? Yeah, cool. Can, I, can you pass me the note? After Bamford's injured legs finally gave in, Click was prepared for his introduction to the fray, with these instructions from a coach who also moonlights as Mickey P. Kerr's vasectomy doctor. Whilst there was only a one goal lead, Leeds' dominance made it relatively comfortable till the end of the game. This bumhole clenching 90th minute corner notwithstanding. Most fun on offer was watching Scott Parker slowly sink into depression before the game ended in a deserved 2-1 win. And to be fair to Parker, he said some very magnanimous things about Leeds after the game. He's actually, for a southerner, annoyingly likeable. And you know what? I wouldn't be upset if they stayed up. There was more joy from the under 23s to come as well, as during one of my usual Twitter scouting sessions I came across this free kick from Sam Greenwood, briefly turning himself into Janino. Leon, not Middlesbrough. By slamming in an absolute worldie of a free kick. I know there's a big gap between the youth team and the first team, but my excitement about this group of kids is legitimate. They're absolutely brilliant. Can't wait to see more of them making an impact on the first team. But it's safe to say that's where the fun very much stopped for us this week, with news reports emerging that Gianni Alioski has signed a pre-contract agreement with Galatasaray. Now, as yet, these are unconfirmed rumours, and we all know how unreliable the football gossip mill can be. But what I will say is, if there is no fire in this case, someone has got a fucker of a smoke machine on the go. And if for some reason you aren't aware why this is an issue, at the away leg of the 2000 UEFA Cup semi-final, two Leeds fans, Christopher Loftus and Kevin Spade, were brutally stabbed and murdered, leaving a deep scar on every Leeds fan's psyche. There was a lot more to it as well, not just the behaviour of the fans in question that caused so much pain, but also the behaviour of the club itself, with Galatasaray refusing to acknowledge the murders and UEFA insisting the game still had to be played, despite the Leeds players clearly being in a state of shock. What happened that night was disgusting and unforgivable, and remains a heavy burden in the heart of every Leeds United fan to this day.
Now, of course, when Harry Kuehl later moved to Galatasaray, Leeds fans were furious, myself included, and Harry Kuehl is less than dead to me. But, as many have stated, this is an entirely different situation for Gianni Alioski. He was a three-year-old in North Macedonia when these events happened. It didn't have the same impact upon him. And at 29, as a free agent, this is his last chance to negotiate a big contract that will set him up for the rest of his life after football. Also, there is the chance of playing Champions League football. So, from a personal point of view for him, I completely understand the decision and why he would make it. But there will be a section of Leeds fans who will never forgive him for this and I also understand that feeling. Gianni has been an absolutely unreal servant to this club. He has been fantastic. He has ran through walls and let's be honest he's been playing right at the limits of his ability but his sheer effort, will, determination and good natured personality off the field have made him a bit of a cult figure and it's because of this that I'd be so gutted if this were to be true. Linking his move to the events of 2000 feels a bit harsh on him to be honest. It's not his responsibility. But I would have hoped that someone would have sat him down and explained to him just what this would mean for his relationship with Leeds fans. There are two, maybe three clubs that you can't go to and have Leeds fans still respect you, and I'm afraid this is one of them. And whilst I will love Gianni Alioski for his contribution to our promotion winning season forever, this will tarnish it. But to suggest that he is in any way in the same league as Harry Kuehl is a vast overreaction. As is this act of petty vandalism from whichever dickhead decided to take it out on one of Burley Banks' murals. My main problem with this is the absolute lack of can control. If you are going to spray paint something, at least have a couple of practice runs first and make sure you can do it. Like, I can't even read what this fucking says. It says, die th... Is it just FR. Die FR gala. I don't know what it means. I don't get it. Maybe it's Latin. V for gala. Or maybe it's just someone who really fucking loves bingo. To be honest, it's an issue that I can respect pretty much every viewpoint on. It's obviously an incredibly emotive issue and there is a reason emotions run so high when this is discussed. I think it's good for Janny that fans aren't in the stadium at the moment because I'm sure he would be getting told very vociferously what Leeds fans think of this decision, if it turns out to be true. I'm not quite mature enough that I can wish him good luck. I can't. If you play for them, I don't wish you well. To be honest, I kind of hope your kneecaps fall off. But... Whatever happens, players come and go, this club's forever. There was more tragedy to come this week as we suffered the loss of two truly irreplaceable figures. Frank Worthington only had one season at Leeds, but he was a true, true maverick. The kind of old school player we won't see the likes of again. Hard drinking, hard scoring, all round party animal legend. And a man whose highlights reel is well worth a watch. He's gone much too soon, but a life well lived. But of course, the bigger news this week for Leeds United was that we lost one of the greatest to ever wear a Leeds shirt, with Peter Lorimer succumbing to his long battle with illness. There isn't much more that can be said about Lash. He's Leeds United's all-time greatest goal scorer, and his iconic goals will live on forever. I was lucky enough to have the experience that thousands of Leeds fans had of heading to the commercial in Holbeck after a game, the pub that he ran, and when I first went, I didn't even realise it was his pub. My mate just took me and... Uh, I've never been so starstruck as when he came out from the back in order to take our orders. We had a little chat about Ross McCormack's good performance that day and I shook his massive hands and said thank you. And That's someone that'll live with me forever. He struck me as a wonderfully kind and gentle man, as well as being an incredible footballer. as a key part of the greatest side this club has ever had. The list of tragedies we suffered this year have been so immense and I can't wait to be back with all of you so we can pay a fitting tribute to all of the heroes that we've lost. Rest in peace, Lash. In support. What a goal! Many thanks for watching, especially to my Patreons whose support means the world to me. Thanks for keeping me going. Marching on together. Love you. <laughs>